Hello and welcome to this session for Research Ed Norwich in June 2020. My name's Stuart Keim and I'm the Director of Education at Evidence-Based Education. Today I'm going to talk about a project that we've been working on here at EBE called the Great Teaching Toolkit and I invite you to join the discussion on social media um, about this project by using the hashtag Great Teaching. And later on in this presentation, I'm also going to um, uh, point you towards a website and invite you to come along and join us um, in collaboration on this project. So teachers know an awful lot about learning and how to make it happen. Um, but quite a lot of that knowledge seems to get lost or is even disregarded when it comes to their own professional learning. So among those conditions that we would routinely provide for students in classrooms are things like clear sequenced curricula that set out learning aims, diagnostic assessments which ensure that prerequisites are secure and activated, um, models of excellent performance and scaffolding and guidance and opportunities for practice and crucially feedback that guides next steps and indicates progress. These are all the things that um, educators working in um, in classrooms and lecture halls up and down um, the country and, and really around the world would recognize as being those kind of routine conditions, those things that we would provide for students day in, day out. And many teachers who strive to ensure that their students' learning has all of these supports would say that their own has none of them. And that's something that we wanted to address in this Great Teaching Toolkit project. So there are three stages to the project. Firstly, um, a review of the research evidence into effective teaching. Um, and that's something that we published um, on the 19th of June, 2020. It's called the Great Teaching Toolkit Evidence Review. And it's a starting point for us. Um, and it's a starting point, crucially, for a collaboration uh, with a whole range of different people, teachers, school leaders, lecturers, policymakers, designers, innovators, um, a whole host of people who work in some way in education and are invested in it. So that's that first part of things, to review the evidence and to say, well, where are we right now? What does the best available evidence tell us about what seems to be worth learning for teachers? What matters um, in teaching? The second part of it then is to develop um, diagnostic measures that actually test out that model. So we want to go further than simply setting out a list or a framework um, of things that teachers should know and do. We want to then test whether or not those things actually make a difference. And we want to be able to provide really strong, actionable feedback to teachers based upon those measures. So that's going to be our next step. Um, and then what we want to be able to do is to use the information that we're gathering there to personalize professional development for those teachers, to feed back uh, with tips and advice on the things that seem to be worth learning about, but then also the ways in which um, it seems to be most effective to learn about those things. Truly to um, address a really, really important um, uh, issue in teachers' professional learning, that, um, uh, that homing in and personalizing of the curriculum for professional learning. So as we talk about great teaching in this project, then we need to define what we mean by great teaching. Um, and it's a pretty slippery uh, concept because teaching is a really complex activity. But great teaching, first and foremost, has to be defined by its impact. A great teacher is one whose students learn more. It can't be defined uh, in terms of compliance to a set of practices, however soundly based they may be, nor by the demonstration of specific skills or even by the possession of particular teacher mindsets or understandings. It is a really complex and multidimensional activity. But crucially, it has to be defined by its impact on students and student outcomes. But while it can't be defined by compliance and the demonstration of skills and the possession of particular mindsets, what we find is that on balance, honing certain teacher practices and developing specific skills and adopting particular mindsets seems to be better than not doing so. So as we think then about personalizing professional development for teachers, 
Um, actually, the likely best bets for enhancing the impact of teaching is to engage in some kind of systematic, focused effort to develop fluency and expertise in the practices and skills and on areas of understanding that seem to really make a difference to student outcomes. And so this is this is where we kind of set our scene for the work of the Great Teaching Toolkit. And we start then with the evidence review itself, which is the first stage um, of this project. And so um, what I'm going to talk about now is a little bit about how we went about this, what we found when we started to look at the research evidence. And then we'll look um, at specifically at um, specific uh, sorry, I've said specific a lot. Uh, we'll look at uh, the dimensions and the elements of great teaching that we drew out of the research uh, review um, process. So as we were uh, going th uh, about this review, the team of uh, Rob Coe, so Rob um, led this review and is the lead author on the, um, the Great Teaching Toolkit Evidence Review. Um, he, along with uh, my colleagues CJ C. Rauch, um, uh, Dan Singleton from uh, the design uh, company Igneo, uh, and I um, went about reviewing the best available research evidence um, on teacher uh, teaching effectiveness, the kind of competencies or elements associated with really um, a strong teaching practice. And what we found was then a, a consensus within the existing research, a kind of signal within the noise about which elements of teaching appear to be worth learning. But we also found that the evidence base is limited. So there are lots of correlational studies, for instance, um, and certainly more uh, of those than ones that make really strong causal claims. And so there are lots of limitations um, to developing certain aspects of the Great Teaching Toolkit. And um, But it's, it's really important to recognize that this first stage, reviewing the research evidence, is really just the, the starting point to get us into a conversation and a collaboration uh, between classroom practitioners and researchers and designers and innov innovators and lots and lots of um, people and voices within education um, that ends up with us developing and then testing this model of great teaching uh, that, we've, that, we've, um, uh, that we're working on to then deliver feedback tools that help teachers to know where they are where they're heading and how to get there. And so as we reviewed the research evidence, what we drew out were these 17 elements of great teaching. And each of those elements is re represented by these colored blocks uh, that we've kind of assembled there um, to, you know, to, to represent the, the, the kind of building blocks, if you like, these elements of, of really strong teaching practice. And this model of great teaching then that we um, pre present really um, has then four key dimensions to it. And, and, and those 17 elements are organized into four dimensions. And they're these, um, understanding the content, creating a supportive environment, maximizing opportunity to learn and activating hard thinking. And I'm going to talk um, about each of these uh, individually very briefly now, uh, but then I invite you uh, to read the evidence review itself um, and then to talk about it and to talk about it uh, both on social media using that hashtag great teaching and also by engaging with the website greatteaching.com. So the first of these dimensions is understanding the content. And this is really about having a deep and fluent knowledge uh, of the content that um, is being taught, but also um, a flexible um, uh, understanding of it and how it's learned. And thinking about how to teach it and how it's learned are two different things, actually. So teachers need to have this kind of um, explicit repertoire of well-crafted explanations and examples and tasks and so on for the things that they're teaching. So it's not just knowing your stuff, it's also having um, that, that um, flexibility of understanding so that you can adapt and, and what have you to a whole range of different circumstances. And here are the elements then of uh, this dimension, understanding the content. And you can see there we've got these four elements that talk about knowledge of certain things and then the ability to do certain things. So, for instance, knowing relevant curriculum tasks and being able to generate um, varied exam explanations and representations and analogies and so on. So that's the first um, dimension, understanding the content. 
Um, the second then is creating a supportive environment for learning. And this is really about relationships of trust and respect uh, between students and teachers and uh, between students and students. Um, and this is uh, gets to the heart of student motivation and support and challenge and the, the notion of a positive um, learning environment, and one in which there's this positive attitude towards learning. The elements then of um, this particular dimension are on the screen here. And they're all about the, you know, these, the promotion of um, interactions and relationships and the positive climate and um, motivation uh, or, or an environment of motivation through competence and autonomy and relatedness. And crucially, an environment of high expectation where you have this high challenge and high trust. So that basically people feel that it's okay to have a go. The third dimension of great teaching is um, the this uh, maximizing opportunity to learn, and in some uh, some parts of the literature, and also in you know in frameworks and in practice, it's talked about as managing the behaviour um, or classroom management, those kind of things. And while a lot of people would say, well, you know, this is a um, you know a, a standard no brainer part, it's actually quite controversial in many ways because different teachers have very different styles and values and priorities. So we set out to, to acknowledge this by um, having these three um, core elements of, of this dimension. So things like managing the time and resources efficiently in the classroom, ensuring rules and expectations and so on are consistently applied, and then preventing and anticipating responding to disruptive incidents. So that's the third dimension, maximizing opportunity to learn. The fourth and final dimension is um, about activating students' thinking. And we refer to this as activating hard thinking. Um, this is at the heart of really great teaching, getting your students to think hard about the material that you want them to learn. And it's pretty much the hardest part of the job to learn because it's actually really rare to get reliable feedback about whether it's working or not. You know, student learning is invisible and it's slow and it's not linear. And so we need ways of knowing whether or not it's happening and how well it's happening. And that's really um, you know, the starting point for um, much of the work that we're now starting to undertake in these subsequent parts of the Great Teaching Toolkit project. So here are the elements of activating hard thinking. These, um, there are six of them here. So this is the first set of three. And uh, we begin with structuring moving on to explaining and then questioning. And I'm not going to read out all of the, the text there, um, but you can see that we've, we've kind of um, tried to break it down into these, into these um, discrete areas. So structuring, explaining, and questioning, and then interacting, embedding, and activating. And you know, these, are, these are these kind of um, the, the core work of teachers day in, day out. Um, and what we've tried to do here is to, to um, put them into sort of some little discrete elements, not so that they're seen as isolated, um, you know, units of activity or whatever, but so that they can be, um, you know, um, focused on to be, uh, you know, seen as, as kind of goals for improvement, as specific areas for improvement. And so, you know, our starting point for uh, the work that we've done then um, with the great teaching um, toolkit evidence review is to you know identify the elements of great teaching that came out of the existing research and then to investigate the process of trying to get better at each of them in you know in, in isolation to kind of see them as as these little kind of areas of focus but that doesn't imply that we think that classroom teaching can be reduced to a set of isolated techniques and only that our best bet for learning to be a better teacher is to work on specific underpinning competencies one at a time, these, these specific a areas, these elements. And we're likely to find that some can be improved more quickly than others, that some matter more than others in their impact on student learning, that there are interactions and dependencies and threshold effects in their relationships and that priorities should be different for different teachers at different stages in different contexts. And as we discover and, and incorporate these complexities, we actually hope that our model um, will adapt and, and become more useful over time. But crucially, the only way that we can do that is in collaboration 
um, with a wide range of, of um, teachers. And so what we're aiming to do then is to get, get to a point of this personalized curriculum for teacher learning. And what we need to then think about along the way is creating these systems and instruments to provide formative, actionable feedback. That's, you know, ways that, of, of accessing the stuff. It's really easy and accessible to get to the stuff that you need to know about to help you focus your learning, to evaluate impact and to track your professional growth. Um, and, and underpinning all of that are going to be these networks for peer and expert support that enable us to generate and share and apply evidence about the most effective ways to improve. So this is truly a collaborative project that really can only exist with, um, uh, with a whole wide range of people getting involved. And so we've, We've got stuck into stage one of the Great Teaching Toolkit um, development uh, by completing the evidence review um, published on the 19th of June 2020 and by engaging in this collaboration that we really want to continue um, as we move through um, the development of diagnostic measures and feedback and into this personalization of professional development for teachers. And so in order to do that, um, I uh, invite you to come with us and to join the Great Teaching community by heading over to greatteaching.com where you'll find uh, that you can download the uh, Great Teaching Toolkit evidence review that I've talked about a little bit here today and you can read that but also you'll find details of how you can join the conversation and to keep the conversation going about um, the uh, about great teaching and, uh, and to co contribute to that personalization of professional development. So I want to thank you for uh, listening to this, this presentation. I hope you found it um, interesting and useful. Uh, I hope you go over to greatteaching.com and download the report and, and, and read it and crucially take part in the conversation. Um, please use the hashtag great teaching on social media, um, follow us at Evidence in Edu on Twitter. Um, and I look forward to, uh, to engaging with you on this really, really exciting project um, as we move forwards with it. Thanks very much for uh, joining today.